A pedestrian bridge has collapsed at Florida International University over a Miami highway, killing several people. Vehicles are still trapped under the rubble and authorities are attempting rescues. The bridge was only recently installed and was designed to withstand hurricane force winds. Let's get more on the story. Kim Rodis is a professor of civil and environmental engineering at George Washington University. She joins us now from Washington. Kim, many thanks for joining us on the program. Now, let's start off uh, by talking a bit more about this bridge. I believe uh, it was built in just a few hours. How is that possible? It's, there was a particular portion of it that was put in place in a few hours last Saturday. The bridge is not completed yet. A bridge, this bridge has multiple spans. Uh, one span over the highway is the one that was prefabricated on the side of the road and then swung into place on Saturday. That's the span that has experienced this tragic collapse. The university described uh, the building of this bridge, the bridge itself, as a first of its kind. It used some sort of new technology. Can you tell us a bit more about it? As the um, uh, world becomes more urbanized, we wind up in a situation with bridges where, as bridge engineers, we want to get in, get out, and stay out because we want the, the bridges are providing uh, transit over areas and through areas. And so you don't want people that are driving don't want to be held up because of the construction. So accelerate, accelerated bridge engineering, um, which is what was used on this particular span, is meant to close down major arteries through cities for less time. They built it on the side, prefabricated, then they swung it into place. But the bridge was far from complete when this tragic collapse occurred. So was that the problem? Do you, do you think that's why the bridge collapsed? When structures, buildings and bridges collapse, it is almost always during construction. It's very, very difficult to get these large, heavy structures into place. And you have to think about building the different pieces and putting the different pieces together. That's when the bridge is most vulnerable. If you know this, presumably the people building this bridge knew this, why would they allow it to be used uh, so soon if it was still under construction? It was under construction. It was being, it, it, it only was being used in the sense that it was spanning the highway. The pedestrian portion of it was still being built. So there's a whole mast that goes in. This is a cable supported bridge. The cables, the mast was not yet built. The cables were not. Yeah, though this was a temporary condition during construction. No, it never should have happened. Engineers work very, very hard to prevent this kind of horrible event. Unfortunately, sometimes unforeseen things occur. We don't yet know exactly what went wrong, but uh, is it too early to ask what lessons could be learned from what has just happened? Yes, it's too early because we don't know what went wrong. Any time that there is a structural collapse, the entire engineering community goes through two steps. And we're talking about things, again, right now we're at this initial stage where what we're trying to do is save people that were um, injured. But after that portion of the emergency has passed, engineers do an investigation to find out what went wrong. And then they do introspection to find out why. And then they communicate those results to prevent such 
tragedies from happening again. Okay, Kim, I appreciate you uh, speaking to us on TRT World. Kim Roddis, Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at George Washington University. Many thanks.